Hey, what's up guys? So it's time for another eBay unboxing. And when I was bidding on this, I sweated out for seven days on eBay. Um, there was 38 watchers and I said, oh, I'm definitely not going to get this one. Um, because those 38 watchers, um, only out of those 38 watches, only 12 people were bidding at the time. And then the last five seconds, um, oh God, <laughs> my antiques are flying. Um, across the room here okay um and then what happened is is that like all those bidders turned into snipers at the last second i did with a four second snipe um to the auctions ending and somebody else did too and three others bid with a five second snipe but i won and so let's see what i have here oh wow this is actually beautiful okay so this is an antique victorian purse and let's just uh take a little gander <laughs> a little look at that and it has this uh, gorgeous gorgeous little chain and uh actually wait okay there we go um this is just quite beautiful so let's inspect it close up all right so if you look on the bottom we have steel cut beads and uh steel cut beads um actually were from the early 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 um like i believe the regency era so going back to the late 1700s to the early 1800s um, steel cut beads were very popular and it went on of course until the end of the Victorian era so we got these dangly beads if you look close we have metallic sequins and if you look really really close you can see that they have tarnishing on them um, I don't know what they're made out of but uh, they're quite old then you see a steel cut bead uh, design and then let's turn it around and see the design on the other side and on the other side, we have a similar design. Let me just get the chain out of the way with uh, steel cut beads. And we see these like little stars and little flowers. Um, some of them missing, which is quite to be expected with something this old and all along the bottom. Now, where was this made? That is the question. There is something dangling from it on this side. And let's see if there's any marking. Sometimes there'll be a marking on something this old. Um, most often not. And does it say anything and it does say something so let's try to zoom in on that and try to oh come on come on cooperate and let's try to see what it says okay and well I can't even tell can you tell wait hold on let's try to get a better focus on this and I cannot make that out I cannot make it out at all but it could actually b b i believe b t s d e i'm not sure but that could be like uh some kind of like french um type of like word for like almost like a patent but it could not i don't know it might be french and uh it's not telling us let's try to get a better zoom in there because i like to do research on my antiques and try to find out what it is that i have and okay let's try to look sideways do we see anything the answer is no Let's pull it this way. And this is totally, totally not cooperating. <laughs> Let's check it out now. Do we see anything? And the answer is no. Will we ever know what this says? I don't think so. Hold on. All right. I'm going to try my best to try to see what this says. Registered, I think it says. RGD. Wait. It might be British then. Well, son of a gun. Son of a gun. Hold on. I'm trying to keep my hand steady. I'd never make a good surgeon. That's for damn sure. And yeah, I can't, I totally can't make that out. Yep. It's definitely, definitely not happening. But I wonder why there was a lot of interest in this purse. And what kind of purse is this? Well, they call these sovereign purses. And, uh, I'll show you why in a second. Now, I am not an expert. I'm going to tell you right now. I am not like one of those antiques roadshow hosts where I'm going to tell you what every single thing is and know 100% for sure what it is. But I do use Google a lot and I do find out interesting information on the antiques that are in my collection that way. Now, um, let's try to open this up. Now, how does it open? It has a little button. Don't know if you can see that. But we have a little button on the top and let's get it open. Okay, so now it's open. And as I look, I don't know, let's try to get the light. Um, it's very, very hard to get the light in there. 
But um, as I looked on the very, very bottom of the purse, I see a couple of the little um, metal star sequins that were placed in there. Now, this is made out of actually like some kind of suede. So the inside is like a chamois type of suede leather. And then you see this little compartment here that's almost uh, uh, like ruffled and uh, very pretty, actually. And uh, I believe it held... Um, a special coin and I believe it was a sovereign coin so let's find out more information about these type of purses if we can um, it's fun to actually Google these things and that is one of the big reasons why I like to collect antiques because I really 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 enjoy and how do you get this closed again I am NOT an expert on these things and actually this is the first one in my collection like this so let's try to get it closed if we can do you press the button and push it in? We shall only find out, I guess. Okay, so I learned a new thing. I learned that the way to get this closed is by pressing in the button and then pushing it shut. So that's the way you get something like this closed. But uh, look how dainty and beautiful this is. And it's very petite and very small, which I actually like. I like the fact that it's very small and petite. This would actually make a perfect, perfect purse if you collect antique dolls. Um, you can have one of your larger dolls um, holding up a purse like this. And uh, that would be a like really a cute like prop for an antique doll. So let's place this here for now and uh, let us do some like research and try to find out more about these purses. Okay, so for an example, there's another one. I mean, it's similar. It's not exactly like mine at all. Um, of course, you're not going to probably find the same exact one, but let's uh, take a look. It opens up around the same way. We have the steel cut beads going throughout it. And the inside, though, is crocheted. So this one is probably older, probably circa 1800 to 1825. And the title for the auction is Antique Hand Beaded Sovereign Purse, which uh, secure metal clasp. Very interesting. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you was... An article I found now here's the same shape as my purse but in black well it was in an old ad in a magazine called Beaton's Book of Needlework circa 1870 so now we're getting an idea about the age so I'm assuming that mine is about 1870 it has that same little push button on the top very interesting steel cut beads um, but this one has crochet with the beads on it. But we have a similar type of uh, handle. And what it says here is, according to a brief history of bags and purses from the Hampshire Museum in England, sovereign purses were coin purses with metal fastenings. Okay, so mine has the metal fastening on the top. Small knitted, netted, or crocheted silk or cotton coin purses are also characteristic of the Victorian period and were known as stocking purses or miser's purses. By mid-century, these had metal fastenings, okay, so like you see here at the top, um, metal fastenings, and the hole was often made of a delicate metal chain, which supported sovereigns. Sovereigns, I believe, were a British coin, and half sovereigns, hence the term, the term sovereign purse. Chamois or chamois leather, okay, there we go, chamois, that's what was found inside our purse, was also used, so the interior um, or the outer part of the purse um, was made out of chamois le leather together with metal rings to secure the coins. Sovereign cases were of circular metal design with internal an internal spring to release a coin at a time. Now mine don't have that in there but they're still known as sovereign purses. So it says it is worth noting that in North America handbags are still called purses which may refer back to their introduction there from Europe after 1800 when they were still primarily called coin purses. Very interesting. Now here's another thing that I had found. Um, let us take a look. Here's another sovereign purse um, that was sold on eBay. Well, it only sold for $38.38, but it's in really, really bad condition. Um, it's pretty toasty. And this one um, has the same type of top as mine, um, but it's knitted. So it's more of a crochet type of purse. Yeah, that one's really toasty. I'm surprised it sold for that high. The purse that I bought ended up being about that same price um, with all those bidders and watchers. So um, I think I did pretty good. Now, um, here's something else 
um, that I found. Let me just try to find it. Here we go. So this is a whole, a whole article. I probably showed it to you before on my channel. And it's a whole thing about beaded sovereign purses. So apparently these are Regency. So from the Regency era. So from the late eight, um, the late 1700s to the early 1800s, you had um, beaded sovereign purses. And uh, here's some examples. This one is very, very old. Here's some other ones that are from uh, actually two early 19th century examples. And this design went on for over 100 years. So you would see purses like this still in the 1890s, even about 1900, 1910, 1915. So you see the top, it has the push button like mine. Um, same with that one, but these are crocheted and beaded and they have like little tassels on the bottom. Now, um, here's another one. And uh, now these sovereign purses were generally just under five inches. Um, they were really no longer or bigger than five by five or five inches. Most generally, most of them were even smaller. Here's uh, two examples of uh, like sunburst style or pinwheel designs, or they also call these pie crust shaped purses. Um, these are very, very early. And uh, again, we have the crochet. So you know the Regency ones, if you find them, uh, mostly were crocheted. And uh, you won't see like the velvet is more Victorian-ish. Um, here's another example, crocheted, be uh, crocheted beaded purses. These are from 1800 to about 1825. You see that same shape as mine, almost like a pie crust or a round shape with the metal top. And this one has a latch that you lift up and down. And this one has a button like mine. And so as you can tell through the decades um, and th through the century, um, they really didn't change very much. So it is very, very, very hard to find a date for these type of purses. Uh, generally trying to date them and figure out exactly how old they are are very, very hard because you would find them also in the Victorian era as well. So now I can sort of understand the interest in this purse, why it had so many watchers, why it had so many people bidding on it. Um, pretty much um, a lot of people actually uh, wanted to add it to their collection, of course, because it is a very, very old early purse. Again, with these danglies, the chamois on the inside made out of leather. This is not a late Victorian one. Um, and when I say late, I mean like 1890s, 1900, 1910. This is more of an 1870 and before type of purse. So my guess, if I had to guess... Um, and again, I'm no expert, so don't hold me to it here. If you know, write it in the comments below precisely how old this purse is. But if I had to guess, I would have to say this purse was made between 1850 to about 1870. So uh, another great eBay find, and I'm so glad I was able to share it with you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys all soon. So long.